So recently there was this paper published in the journal Scientific Reports showing that a single exposure for just three minutes of light of the wavelength 670 nanometers significantly increased the color discrimination in the test subjects and the effects of that single exposure lasted for a week. Having read the study, I got really excited about the potential of making my own hokey little device to try to replicate the results of the paper. And the point of this experiment is to see if I can actually detect a measurable increase in the ability of my eyes to distinguish color. So apparently there's a whole world of various devices out there on the internet using various wavelengths of light to have all kinds of different health benefits. And I'm not sure how much science is behind any of that, but this is actually peer reviewed science. The scientists Harpeet Shinmar, Chris Hogg, Magella Naveau, and Glenn Jeffrey are at the Institute of Ophthalmology at University College in London. They've apparently done other research in this area and had different results, but this was a paper that really caught my eye. So apparently what happens is ATP, adenosine triphosphate, the so-called energy currency of cells in the human body, it's made by mitochondria, and as you get into your 40s, which I am, the cones in your eyes start to kind of degrade. They don't really die, apparently, but they get not as good at making ATP, they get weaker, and as a result, your color discrimination declines. Scientists have found that this particular wavelength of light, and maybe some other wavelengths as well, I'm not real clear on the range, can trigger the mitochondria to more effectively make ATP, and as a result, can improve the color discrimination of the cones in your retina. The exact mechanism, I guess, isn't totally understood. The scientists say the likely mechanism is via long wavelengths reducing nanoscopic interfacial water viscosity around ATP rota pumps. So there you go. So I wanted to make a pair of glasses to do this myself. They used kind of a different setup, but I'm a DIY kind of guy. I went to the thrift store. I got some used sunglasses for 75 cents. I got a ping pong ball, cut it in half poke some holes in it, cut some holes in the lenses of the sunglasses, hot glue the ping pong balls on there, and then I had to start soldering these LEDs. These LEDs are very tiny. You can see this little white thing right here is the LED. Kind of difficult to solder, but given some time and some uh, frustration, I managed to get it done. Turns out that these LEDs run a lot hotter than I counted on, and they actually just melt right through the hot glue that I was using to hold them in place. So had to kind of reposition them, and then I just slathered everything in JB Weld epoxy to kind of hold it firm. You can see there's a potentiometer on the front, and that's used to adjust the brightness. It can get quite bright, a little much to handle. The brightness is an interesting question. In the study, they specify an intensity of 8 milliwatts per square centimeter. Apparently, in previous research, they've gone as high as 40, and these values are all pretty tolerable to the human eye. But they were glad that they could get it down to 8 because it's a little easier to handle. So then I was faced with the challenge of figuring out how many LEDs to get and how bright I should make them. Now, my photometric and radiometric knowledge is basically nil, so I might have done the math wrong here, but I did a little crash course on the internet and I think I figured it out. The particular LEDs that I got, which were actually the only ones I could find at 670 nanometers, were specified in total radiometric flux. So I had to convert that to milliwatts per square centimeter, I had to make some assumptions along the way, and if you happen to know anything about this stuff and you want to check my math, I'm going to put it up on the screen briefly here. Some of the assumptions I made included the distance to the cornea, the angle of illumination that the LEDs were emitting, and so forth. But when my math was all said and done, I came to the conclusion that I needed about 10 LEDs per eyeball, and that that would get me to somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 24 milliwatts per square centimeter at the cornea. But I estimated that roughly half of that would be taken out by the diffusers that I have in the glasses to even out the light. So. I think I'm right in the ballpark. And I was gratified to see that in the paper they used 9 LEDs per eye. So I have no idea what kind of LEDs they used, but just the fact that we we're within one order of magnitude and the number of LEDs gave me some cause for hope. So to actually determine if this is helping my color vision in some way, I need a way to reliably test my color discrimination. I maybe should have just used some kind of online test or something, but I decided to make my own little simple software to do this. Now the authors use a test that determines the ability of the subject to discriminate color along two different axes. These are the triton axis and the proton axis, and this refers to two kinds of color blindness. This research doesn't really have anything to do directly with color blindness. As far as I'm aware, there's no way you can treat color blindness with this technique. But it makes some sense that the same test you would use to determine somebody's color blindness or to measure the depth of it, you could use in this case. We're just trying to determine how well people can discriminate colors. If you look on this diagram, this is a CIE chromaticity diagram, you'll see these so-called lines of confusion. 
This is, for example, the Triton axis, and a person with Tritonopia-style colorblindness has trouble discriminating any colors that are along these lines. Similarly, Protonopia is a different kind of colorblindness, and they have trouble distinguishing colors along these sorts of lines. So what the authors did is they picked two colors here and here, and this constituted their Triton axis. They determined how well the subjects could discriminate colors along this line. Then they pick chromaticities here and here and determine the subject's ability along that axis. This is what they call the proton axis. Now, if I did my math right on this point, I think this comes out to RGB values like this. So this is how I'm going to do the testing for my experiment. I wrote this little Python program. And yes, the code is down in the link, but to be honest, it's pretty rough and you'll have to be a programmer to even really understand what's going on or modify it for your own needs. But I start with the two colors that anchor the axis, the triton axis or the proton axis. And I pick those as my anchor colors. Then I pick a random point somewhere in between those two colors. And whichever anchor color is the furthest from the random point, I pick as the background color. And then I draw two letters on the screen and the color at the random point. I type those two letters in. If I get it right, it decreases the contrast by half and then repeats with two different letters. If I get it right again, say, it cuts it in half again. If I get it wrong, it goes back half and does this little binary search till it can find the exact threshold of discrimination. That then constitutes one test. I then do that again. And I repeat for a total of 10 tests along that axis. Then I switch to the other axis. I do another 10 tests, record the data, and then I'm done. I also spend about 10 minutes with my eyes shielded in total darkness. I'm doing this test in a dark room with just the light of the monitor on, a little bit of light on the keyboard so I can see the letters. And this, I think, is going to give a nice repeatable result. Again, I don't really need to characterize in any absolute sense how good my color discrimination is. I just want to see if there's some drift in a positive, neutral, or negative direction. Other ways my testing might be weird include the fact that I'm using a cheap monitor. This is 8-bit per pixel color. Uh, I did some very rough estimation, and, and based on the preliminary results of the testing of my color discrimination, I think that the resolution of color is maybe a factor of 10 smaller than what I'm able to distinguish. So I think it'll be good enough to show some kind of drift if I at least get some kind of significant results. The scientists found that you had to do this exposure in the morning. They're not exactly sure when, but the basic idea is that mitochondria have a kind of circadian rhythm to them, and they're only really susceptible to this effect in a certain window. They said in the paper they did it at about 8 or 9 a.m. So I'm just going to do it when I wake up in the morning. I'm going to do a three-minute exposure, and then I'm testing in the evening. They tested three hours after the exposure, but it looks like from their results that the effects last like a week. So I think the fact that I'm testing in the night shouldn't really throw anything off. And as I said, I'm going to be doing an exposure every morning, whereas they just did a single one in the test. I think this is a pretty cool result. There are only 20 people in the study, and the scientists say that the data is a little bit noisy. But if they can get some more funding and do some more research and really nail down a robust result here, that means that a device that you can make yourself out of spare parts and just a few bucks might actually improve your color vision. It's rare that we get the opportunity to have that kind of positive effect on our own biology. I'll put the schematic for these glasses down in the description as well, just for reference. If you don't know how to do this already, the schematic is not going to be a useful guide for making your own pair of glasses, but just in case it's useful. It probably goes without saying, but I am not a doctor and I can't give you medical advice. If you're going to do something like this, you're doing it at your own risk. Well, thanks for going on this weird little journey with me. I'm excited to see what happens, and I'll let you know what the results of this wacky experiment are.